Hey friends, welcome back. Thanks so much for stopping by. I am recapping in this series of videos all the books that I read last year. I'm dividing them up by trope, so make sure you take a look through and see if you find your favorite trope and see if maybe we've read some of the same books. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Kat. I like to share about the romance novels that I read here on my channel. I would love to have you consider subscribing, and if you like any of these videos, definitely give them a thumbs up. It really does help me in the YouTube algorithm. God, that sounds so, like, businessy. Ugh. <laughs> Today's video is going to be on friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, and fake dating. Little disclosure that I understand that there's books that fit under a few different kinds of tropes. I tried to pick the main trope, if there was like one glaring main trope. So hopefully that makes sense because of course there's books that have one or two or three tropes going on in them. I just tried to pick which, which ones made the most sense to me. We're going to start out with Friends to Lovers, which we have Chasing Heartbreak and Chasing Fate by Kat T. Mason. I was so excited to finally finish these last two books in her Dark Love series. What a series that was. The success that she has had with that series has been so amazing to see. Chasing Heartbreak, well, actually they're both about the same couple. It's about Kate and Noah. I loved Kate so much, so much. Noah is one of those guys, I mean, he's a player. He, he just is a self-professed player. He's a twinkle in his eye. Kate, like, could do a lot better, and yet, Noah surprised me by, this, by his book. I was actually really surprised at the end of Chasing Heartbreak. I'm like, what is going on? What? I, I, I thought it was about them. <laughs> no, I did end up coming around to Noah and you know, I was kind of like, he, he kind of was like here for me in the beginning of the Dark Love series. And then he was kind of down here for me when I started, when I finished Chasing Heartbreak and then he went back up for me. <laughs> I ended up really liking him. They definitely go through it and trying to find love. I mean, hello, the titles are perfection, Chasing Heartbreak and Chasing Fate. Next up we have Home is Where the Heart Is, Jefferson Ranch Book Two by Cassandra P. Lewis. I will say this in every video that one of these books from the series is in. Holy smokes, my favorite series of the year. If you guys aren't reading Cassie's books yet, you are missing out. Home is Where the Heart Is. It's friends to lovers, obviously, and single parent. It's about Daisy and Jason. Full disclosure, I adored Daisy so much. Her heart is so beautiful, almost to her detriment sometimes. I liked Jason in Home, and now this book being technically his book, I mean, they make appearances. They are interconnected. It's an interconnected series. I really liked him until, I really liked him in Home, but in Home is Where the Heart Is, which is his book with Daisy. Oh my God, did he piss me off. I was, <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, I felt very protective of Daisy. I really did. And I got to the point where I was like, Daisy, girlfriend, like, move on. But thank God Jason finally got his <laughs> shit together. This book is angsty as hell because it goes through a long time period. But him as a single dad raising his child is what won me over and when he finally like it snapped and it was like this is the time and if you've read the book you know what I'm talking about I did end up really liking Jason and so happy for Daisy next we have Rugged Heart Montana Airs number three by Ashley K oh my gosh this book I have been waiting for Grayson since the first book 
And it's funny because to this day, I wrote down Preston. There's something about their names, their twins, gentlemen, that these books are about. They are the Montana heirs. For some reason, their names want to be flip-flopped in my head. I don't know why. I, I, I literally wrote down Preston and scratched it out. And I'm like, no, it's Grayson. In any case, it's Grayson and Scarlett. It's small town. It's single parent. I read the first time ever in a book. In this book, Grayson keeps a journal. I freaking loved that. It is my intention to start journaling again this year. It was my intention to do it last year. I didn't, it didn't really happen. <laughs> Here we are. I'm not doing well with my intention yet this year, but I'm really going to try to. And I thought it was really cool. And I loved Grayson even more for the fact that he did that. Moving on to enemies to lovers. Ooh, enemies to lovers is hard for me. It's like bully. It's, it's, it's hard for me. And I started the year with an Enemies to Lovers, which was Sweeter Than Sin by Rachel DeLune. This was kind of cool in that it was like the restaurant industry. And I'm pretty familiar with that, having some family members who own several restaurants. I myself worked in a restaurant. I was a terrible waitress though. My husband was way better at it. No surprise there. But it's about Ezra and Belle. Something I remember about this book is he takes her to Paris on a date. I mean, right? It takes place in London, so they don't have to go far, right? But still, I loved all of that. The next Enemies to Lovers book I read in 22 was The Bitch List by Nikki Ashton. This is also a rom-com. This is also a single parent. It's Nancy and Shaw. I freaking love this series. It's the Dayton Valley series. You guys, Nikki writes rom-coms like no one's business. You will laugh out loud reading her books so much. There are cringy moments. There are steamy moments. There are life rolling on the floor, laughing moments that would happen to anybody, and yet it's in her book and you can totally identify with the characters. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Oops, I almost forgot. We're going to do fake dating in this one too. Jeez Louise, how did I forget that? Okay, here we go. <laughs> the first fake date. This one was hard, I'll be honest. It was hard for me to put this in a category. And if you've read the book, you know. I'm talking about The Bad Wedding Date by Vicki James. This was really special. There was a fake date involved. It did not continue. But then the rest of the book, what Frasier does for a living and then how their relationship kind of continues after the date wasn't an easy, it wasn't easy for me to find a trope that it goes in. Maybe it was just me. I freaking loved this book. The world needs more of Fraser Scott. Is it Fraser Scott? What's his name? I think so. I loved, and you guys know, I'm such a huge fan of Vicki James. Fraser really made me think in this book. And I adored Charlotte. How could you not? Then we have Comic Con by Dee Lagasse. All I have to do is think about this book and put a big picture of Chris Evans. She has talked about, Dee talked about Chris Evans being the muse. And then he was Sexiest Man Alive. Hello, no kidding. She was ahead of the game with that one. This is a, the Comic Con is about Birdie and Atticus. It's workplace, it's fake dating. Atticus is a movie star. Birdie is a comic book writer. It's a very timely story. I really loved it. I decided when I was making these lists, instead of doing a separate one for the holiday books, Christmas books that I read, I would just add them in their appropriate other tropes. So this next one fits into the fake dating trope, which is Sugar Daddy Santa by Kay Lee. You guys know I love her books. She also writes poetry, which I really like as well. Sugar Daddy Santa was about Bash and Amber. It's workplace. 
it's kind of, he's kind of a Scrooge a little bit, but for good reason. And she's an event planner and he hires her to plan this big Christmas party. And she loves Christmas and she's great at her job. And it's, and the bits of fake dating in there really were super sweet. And the fun thing that Kaylee is doing this year is she's gonna have a series of four books. Sugar Daddy Santa was the first one. Then she's gonna have, oh, they're the holiday hotties series. <laughs> then she's gonna have Rockstar Cupid, Sparks with the Single Dad, and my ex, the Pumpkin King. The Pumpkin King? I put Queen. I think it's supposed to be Pumpkin King though. That would make more sense. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I am definitely reading those. They're novellas. They're quick, but she's a great writer and I always love her characters. That's it for friends to lovers, enemies to lovers, and for fake dating. Let me know if you have read any of these books in the comment section below, or if you haven't, what are your favorite books in each of these tropes? Thanks so much for hanging out with me today, guys. I'll see you soon. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series. Bye.